friends, I'm back. It's been a hot minute since I've been here on YouTube and I'm super happy to be here. If you are new, I'm Denise. Welcome to my channel. If you are new or returning and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that red button below. What are you waiting for? There's no reason why you wouldn't want to be part of our YouTube fam. I have the sniffles. My allergies are kind of whack today. I apologize in advance. So it's been a while since I've been here. And that's because I've been laser focused on other aspects of my life mainly my acting career, which is something that I've wanted to do for most of my life, but for various reasons, there have been times in my life where it just hasn't been feasible. I booked some awesome jobs in the past few months. I've been really rehearsing and learning a lot on my own and with friends and my scene partners from class, but my YouTube suffered as a result. I pre-filmed a bunch of content that I just wasn't proud of. I was in the process of editing some videos that I pre-filmed in anticipation of a busy production schedule for the projects I was working on. And when I went back to watch them, they were shit. Oh my God, I gotta sneeze. Oh, I just had a massive sneeze. Even though my acting career is really taking off and I'm really focused on it, I love YouTube and it's not going anywhere for me anytime soon. However, I set really lofty goals for myself when I started this year and I'm realizing that I need to reevaluate what I want to do with this channel and how I want to grow it. So, what's important for me, first and foremost, is to create content that I'm proud of. And if that means that I'm not posting two videos a week, like I originally said, I'm cool with that. So I think going forward, I'm going to post either on Tuesday or Thursday because those are the days in my personal schedule where I can engage with you guys. Jump into the real reason why you guys are here, which is my favorite stuff at the moment. I wanna start with what I'm wearing on my face today. So the first product, oh my God. If you know me, you know I love light to medium coverage foundations. I like a glow. I don't care if it's all I'm wearing, but I'm on camera a lot more than I used to be, whether it be for self tapes, auditions, acting class, actual acting projects, and YouTube, and the fact that I get up early and I keep my makeup on all day. I needed something long wearing and that I didn't have to touch up as much. Enter the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Matte Foundation. Guys, this is unreal. I didn't want to fall into this hype because I am not a fuller coverage foundation girl. And Rihanna has converted me. This is amazing. Not only is the packaging stunning with this beautiful sturdy glass packaging, the pump is great. I apply it with a brush. I'm wearing it on my face today. My face looks awesome. People have been commenting that my skin looks great and I'm like, girl, it's the foundation I'm using. I haven't changed my skincare. So I think that speaks volumes. The shade range is so wide. There's a shade for everybody. And this one is perfect for me when I have some self tanner on. I am in love with this. Beneath foundation, I've been wearing a new primer. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. It's awesome. It is so good. The This is the mini size of it, which is $16, I believe. But the main ingredients are CBD oil and agave. It's hydrating and it really does suck and grip onto your skin and let whatever product you put on top of it grip to it. So I've used it exclusively with I've used it exclusively with this foundation but I've also tried it with other foundations it does stay a little tacky so you have to wait for it to dry down a bit but once it's dried down your foundation isn't going anywhere I love this the product that I want to talk about I have to apologize because I teased on Instagram that I was going to do a whole video about some of the products that I bought from this collection and when I went to edit the video, it was garbage. So I'm gonna talk about it now and give it the attention it deserves. This is 
from the Zoella X ColourPop collection. This is the Brunch Date palette. So Zoe Sug came out with a whole collection with ColourPop that was 70s and brunch themed. I was obsessed with the entire collection, but this was the product I was most excited about. First off, the packaging is gorgeous. Has all the shades listed on the back. And then, this is the palette. It is gorgeous. There's so many beautiful warm tone shades. The shimmers are stunning. The glitters are stunning. Wearing mimosa, maple syrup, and what's this one called? Skinny Latte, this bronzy glitter on my eye today. The color payoff of these shadows is unreal. And it's so pigmented. Like you barely have to dip your brush into these shadows. The glitters last all day and it's just a beautiful palette. I've created some really great day looks, some really great night looks. I love playing with it. The next product is a little random. This is the Rimmel Insta, Insta Duo Contour Stick. So there's a bronzer shade and there is a highlighter shade. I don't really use the highlighter shade. I actually bought this guy for the bronzer. I love the Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick, which I've mentioned on my channel before but I wanted something a little more compact to take with me in my everyday makeup bag. This guy's $7 and it's a warm toned contour shade which you won't commonly find. Usually they are pretty cool toned. So I'm wearing it on my skin today. I think it's a beautiful shade. It blends out really easily. I use a brush to blend it out. And like I said, it's like seven bucks. You can't go wrong with it. So. Highly recommend this guy. It is kind of hard to find in stores. I had to buy it. I found it at a random Target and on Amazon. So I will link it below. Last beauty product, if you want to call it that, is a sunless tanner. So I am religiously addicted to the Saint Tropez bronzing mousse. I have not given it up. But I was sent this as PR from Norvell. This is their self-tanning mousse with bronzer. And this one in particular has an anti-orange formula so you don't look orange. I've used Norvell before when I've gotten airbrushed by a person at a tanning salon. So if you've ever done that, it's commonly from this company. So I knew that I liked their tanner. I knew that the color looked good on my skin. But I wasn't sure what their at-home products were going to be like. And I was very pleasantly surprised. I'm wearing it on my skin today. I do not look orange. And one thing that I struggle with is going from my fair skin, like my normal fair skin in winter to summer. There's like this weird time, usually this time of year in April and May, when I haven't really been outside that much. I haven't been able to go to the pool. And I go from pale to really tan very quick. This is a better product for me to use in that in-between time before I'm dark enough to where I can really use the Saint Tropez mousse and it smells great. The mint that they sent me with this guy is so good. It's the best mint I've ever used so I will link that down below as well and this bottle is huge. Like I don't know if you can really tell how big it is but it's huge. I've barely made a dent in it and for any of you fair skin girls this is a really great self tanner to build a tan gradually and if you do like a darker look you can layer it on i have done that so highly recommend this guy if you're looking to get your bronzed sun-kissed glow on before the warmer months hit so you guys know i love to read i haven't had as much time to read as i would have liked but i did manage to finish two books in the last month in between work and working on sets. So the first book is The Actor's Life, A Survival Guide. This is by Jenna Fisher, who you may recognize as Pam from The Office. Oh, this book, if you are a new actor, if you are thinking about pursuing acting, if you are already on your way, this book is a must must read. It is so inspiring. Jenna talks about how she moved from St. Louis to LA and the challenges she encountered when she mo had moved to LA and then the challenges she encountered as a working actor which to people who aren't actors working actor doesn't necessarily mean you're making money in it. It means you're just working. You're auditioning. You're hustling. You're going to class. 
you're working on your craft and Jenna talks all about that. These people at the end of the book who have had really interesting and successful careers. I'm going to reread this. It was so good. I was very inspired by it and mm, loved it. Second book that I finished was on my list all of last year. I heard people talk about this everywhere and I had a free credit on book of the month so I ended up getting it. This is Circe by Madeline Miller. This book is so fantastic. I would not normally pick up a book about Greek mythology because it's not something I typically gravitate towards. But this story was so, so great. It was about Circe, who's a Greek goddess, the daughter of Helios, the god of sun, and it's all about her interactions with Helios and her mother and her siblings and how she's trying to find her place in the world. She does some stuff that gets her banished to an island and then the rest of the story is really all about how she becomes this badass girl boss and takes no mercy from people, doesn't let people walk all over her, and it was a really beautifully written, exciting, interesting story. So I highly recommend this if you want a different read, something really exciting, really inspiring, this is a fantastic book. Three TV shows I want to talk about. The first one, I am re-loving it, meaning I've loved this continuously, but I re-watched Stranger Things when the trailer came out a few weeks ago, seasons one and two. I've been a fan of this show before it was popular. I know people say that with a lot of stuff, but I remember the day it came out on Netflix we watched it because the music sounded cool and it took place in the 80s. That was literally it. There was no other basis for us watching it because we didn't know if it was good. Ended up loving it. This was my third time watching the show from first season to second season all the way through. And I'm still as obsessed with it as I was before and I'm so excited for season three. Even though I kind of know what's going on in season three, I haven't seen it come all together. I didn't work on all the episodes, so I'm super pumped for July 4th when it comes out. The show I've been re-loving is Love Island, which I think I mentioned last year, but if I didn't, Love Island is a British reality show that I hear so many of the influencers and YouTubers I follow talk about, and it takes place every summer. A bunch of singles, singles are sent to Spain and they live in this villa together for a period, I forget how long the period of time is, but the premise is, is the last couple standing either gets to leave as a couple for love or money and they win 50,000 pounds and it airs like six nights a week, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, and the viewers get involved and get to vote people off. So you could be in a romantic couple, a friendship couple, or a couple not by your own choosing and it's just really juicy, dramatic, fun reality TV that I like to watch when I'm just feeling like a good binge and just something kind of light to have on in the background. So I've been watching a season I hadn't watched before and it's been really fun to pick this show back up. If any of my UK based subscribers know how I can watch it in the States, let a girl know because I am dying to watch this upcoming season. The third show that I've been watching is The OA. This is a sci-fi Netflix original that I would say if you're a fan of Sense8, Stranger Things, that kind of realm, you'll really enjoy. I'm not done with it yet so no spoilers but once you figure out the premise of this show it's so interesting. Really different from any concept I've seen. The is great. It's mainly the concept that has me sucked in though. I'm like, wow, this is fascinating. So, loving the OA. I will report back after I finish season two. I've heard it's a little scarier, so we'll see about that. You guys know I always make a playlist every month of my favorite music from that month. So these are just highlights. I'm not going to put like a whole album on here, but the main highlight of April is that I've been getting really pumped for a music festival I'm going to next weekend called Shaky Knees. It takes place here in Atlanta. Really been jamming to the new releases by a lot of the artists that are going to be there. So Tame Impala, Cage the Elephant, Calpurnia, Beck, 
those are those guys are all on there as well as some random like pop and reggaeton favorites that I've been enjoying so click the link below if you want to take a listen follow my Spotify if you want to keep up with my music that changes more frequently than any of the other things that I mentioned in this video. So if you want to keep up with my music, just follow me on Spotify. For the video, thank you so much for hearing what I am loving at the moment. Subscribe. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for listening to what I am loving at the moment. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are loving, what shows you're watching. I would love to hear and try some new stuff. And thanks to Zyrtec for getting me through this one. But really, it's been real. It's been fun. You guys are awesome. I love you so much. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.